Welcome back everybody. So today I'm going to be comparing the Drunk Deer A75 to the Steel Series Apex Pro TKL 2023. I'm not going to get in depth between the two keyboards. Uh, you can find other reviews out there that talk about their technical aspects, but uh, just a quick recap. They use magnetic switches. Uh, the Drunk Deer, I believe, uses Ratia uh, switches and Steel Series has their own called Omnipoint. They work almost exactly the same. Their actuation points are a little bit different. The Omnipoint adjusts from 0.1 to 4. Uh, whereas a drunk deer is uh, 0.2 to 3.8 millimeters. But uh, in, in practice, you don't see the difference at all. Uh, one thing that the the Apex Pro TKL does have is you're able to set dual actuation. Now, this is a feature that is uh, coming to the drunk deer keyboard eventually, uh, but right now they don't have it. Uh, what that does is you set up two actuation points. The first one, for example, you're playing CSGO, you can set it to run at, say, 1.5 millimeters. And then you can set the same key to actuate to run at three millimeters so when you finish pressing down further on the key you'll start running when you let up it'll start running uh, it'll start walking for you so that's kind of convenient i don't know how useful that is in practice but it is something they do have and it's something that drunk deer plans to bring back as well uh other things i want to discuss is the you know the feeling of the keyboards uh how they sound when i type them the software features and what i think uh is a better buy for the consumer and what you have to look forward to with each brand. So let's get started. So this is the Apex Pro TKL 2023 from Steel Series. Um, I got this about a week ago, so I've given it a good run. Um, I also have the Drunk Deer A75 that I'm gonna show later on in the video. But um, first thing that I wanna talk about with as far as the build quality goes, you know, um, it has supposedly an inside internal aluminum plate. They claim it's air, airplane grade, whatever that means. Um, They've got an OLED here, you can adjust that, you push down, you can program it, you know, you go through the menu by holding this thing, this little key right here by the OLED menu. And uh, see so you got illumination and uh, you can set some different things. You can put your own picture here uh, through the Steel Series uh, software. Um, you know, you can go through record, delete, all kinds of other things here. Um, macros, you know, whatever. Uh, so you've also got uh, the keys. Now that's what I want to talk about. That's the most important thing. Uh, how the keys feel when I'm typing on them versus the Drunk Deer A75, which I'm going to show in the video right now. So if I, if you notice before I begin typing, um, I want to talk about key wobble. Now that's something, I'm not a keyboard enthusiast. Uh, you know, I just got into the whole Hall Effect rapid trigger thing after I heard about it, um, probably about a month ago. So, you know, I've, I've always bought gaming keyboards from Razer or, you know, Logitech or whatever. I never really paid attention to, you know, keyboard modifications such as, you know, custom cases, custom keys, or adding foam or, you know, tape uh, underneath the keyboard to give it more thock, whatever that means. Um, I was just a gamer. I don't know, if a, key if a keyboard looked good, it worked good, maybe had some LED, you know, LED RGB LEDs, that was fine with me. That's all I really cared about. Um, so the whole keyboard wobble thing, you know, this is keyboard sound. That's something new to me, but here's the thing. Once you do start paying attention, and it's like any other thing, maybe audio files go through the same thing. I know mouse people that are into, you know, different kind of mice like this, the Superlight 2, the Superlight 1. They all get into, you know, different different little minutia uh, that the average consumer probably doesn't notice. But once you start noticing, unfortunately, if you're somewhat, you know, OCD like I am, you do, you do pick up on it. Um, so look at this. This has significant keyboard wobble if you're looking at the k key um and that's pretty much all of them you know and unfortunately uh my razor uh black widow had the same problem now if i type on this here's how it sounds it's pretty hollow um it does, I mean, it doesn't sound bad, but it doesn't sound great either. Um, you know, especially compared to the Drunk Deer. I think the Drunk Deer definitely sounds better out of the box. Um, one thing I did notice is these keys have somewhat a keyboard ping. Um, thunder key, I don't know if you can hear it. Let me see, let me see if I can bring the mic down. So there's, there's a keyboard ping on this. Spacebar has it. Enter key for sure has it. 
I mean, the other ones have it, but not as bad. Uh, those are the two big offenders on this keyboard. Um, that's not to say Drug Deer is perfect itself. That also has some issues um, as far as ping goes. Uh, and it varies from keyboard to keyboard depending on how they oiled it. Um, I don't I don't think Steel Series oils these switches or anything like that. They're just pretty much out of the box. It is what it is. I do like the fact that it has a magnetic wrist pad. Um, and, it, you know, you can move the keyboard around. And uh, and it doesn't really come off, which I really appreciate that uh, Steel Series added that. Um, as far as the Hall Effect goes, it's only these keys, the 61 keys. The top F keys don't have it. The arrow keys don't. These don't, as far as I know. At least in, according to the software, they don't. Um, I read elsewhere that there are Cherry MX switches um, besides these. And these are Hall Effect, but the rest of them are Cherry is what I heard. Um, so it is what it is. I, I really don't care. You don't really need Hall Effect switches on every single one anyway. So, I mean, whatever Steel Series did is fine. I think the Drunk Deer, Drunk Deer one, every single one is... Uh, is a Hall Effect uh, key made by Ratia. But I'll get into the Drunk Deer right after this. But, you know, again, this is not a real review. It's just a comparison. Um, you can see my Apex footage I'm going to put up right after this, where I test, where I test uh, Rapid Trigger. And it, it works good. It works just as good as the Drunk Deer keyboard does. Um, I would imagine it probably works just as good or better than the, Ape, uh, the Razer version, uh, whether the new one or the old one. Uh, you know, they're all pretty much the same. I, uh, you know, some may have la lower latency than others, um, and you can find sources on the internet where latency has been tested uh, between these different keyboards. Uh, I don't have the software. I don't have the equipment to do that. Uh, but uh, as far as end user uh, experience goes, I can attest between this one and the A seventy five, and they feel pretty much the same to me. I can't really tell the difference in games. They're both, you know, the response response times are the same. Uh, with a new uh, update that Drunk Deer has, their actuation is now also 0 0.1 millimeters. So that's they've caught up to uh, to uh, Wooding and uh, and Steel Series. Uh, so anyway, I'm going to move on to the A75. Uh, so let's cut to that. So this is the Drunk Deer A75. Um, I've got the white version. I also have the black one too, but um, I sent that one back. I prefer the white one because it matches up with my PC. But uh, on this one, I bought the bare bones. Um, I did buy aftermarket keys from Amazon. Uh, these are the 122 key set. They're uh, double shot PBT see through keycaps. I forget the na exact name of the brand, but they're pretty decent. You know, they're nice. They got a nice texture to them. They feel good. But uh, getting into the keyboard itself, I know I discussed. I want to start with keyboard wobble. If you look at the keyboard wobble and the K key here, it's it's very little, um, and it's f definitely far less pronounced uh, than the Steel Series keyboard was. Uh, in addition to that, uh, they're both plastic keyboards, but this keyboard just feels like it's built better. Um, and now, if I do a typing test, you can probably uh, hear the difference if you just listen to the Steel Series a second ago. So that's how uh, that's how the drunk deer sounds. I personally like the way it sounds. Um, you know, if I'm using the whole keyboard enthusiast terminology, it's got good thock out of the box. Um, there's some people that have opened it up and uh, and they modified it. But the thing is, this doesn't have any screws underneath. You uh, this is held together by latches, so you have to actually get in here and open the casing up if you want to modify it. And some people have in the drunk deer Discord. Uh, they've gone in and uh, opened it up and. The, They've added tape to the bottom of it. Um, they've also added extra foam, whatever. I mean, if you're into that sort of thing, you can do that. Uh, just be aware that you have to use some tools to do it to get into it because unfortunately, Drunk Deer did not include screws like Wooting does. But, uh, you know, if, again, I'm not, I really don't care. I think the keyboard sounds fantastic out of the box. As far as keyboard ping goes, now that's the next thing I wanna talk about. This does have some and it varies from unit to unit. My black A75 that I sent back it only had keyboard ping with enter key. Um, this one doesn't. So if you compare this one, let me bring the microphone closer. This has very little to no ping, um, but some of these keys do, you know. I, you can kind of hear it. I don't know if it's coming through the mic, but a few of the keys have a little bit of a ping. Honest to God, it's really not noticeable. Uh, in day-to-day -day use. Maybe if you're an extreme keyboard snob, 
you might pick up on it. I don't. And and there's people, again, in, in, a, in the Drunk Deer Discord that have gone through and opened up the switches and they've oiled them. If you've got the patience to do that, all the power to you. I don't. And I'm, I'm way too lazy to do something like that. And I, I think it sounds great out of the box. It looks great. I like the fact that you can add these you know, custom keys. These are OEM, if you're wondering, if you want to add on your own uh, keycaps. Uh, these are um, OEM size. Keep in mind, these these three right here that I'm looking at, the function, function one, function two, and the shift key, they're not the normal size. I think these are like 1.25 U's. Uh, double check that. I'll, I'll put up a picture if it is. But um, I, I believe these are 1.25 U. Um, so if you get the like the 80 key set or the 104, they typically don't come with the right size, so keep that in mind. Uh, you can And also the delete key too. Uh, up there sometimes it'll be a, it'll have the wrong size so just be aware of that and get the right keycaps if you do buy the bare version drunk deer does sell a double shot ppt pbt version as well but the shipping time is you know pretty long i think it comes from china so i didn't really want to do that i just chose to buy the bare bones uh, off of amazon and i do recommend if you're in the u.s to get get it from amazon because you know if something goes wrong and you're not happy with it it's an easy return versus buying it from drunk deer um, so yeah, you'll save yourself some trouble. Uh, as far as support goes, you know, Drug Deer is a small company, um, and they have an active person on Discord that's, you know, his name is Lucy Deer. He's always taking feedback. Good guy. If you ping him, he's always, he's always available, which I don't understand how. Uh, I know he's somewhere in Asia, probably in China, but, uh, yeah, you can ping him in the middle of the night and he'll, he'll within an hour, he'll respond, which is fantastic support. And you can report bugs right now. I'm gonna put up on the video. Uh, this this uh, this keyboard, you know, it's being constantly revised. Uh, they started off with some pretty clunky software, but they've now upped their game and they released a web driver. Uh, they're on RC2 right now. Uh, unfortunately, the RC2 software does have bugs, and and it, it, is, it is a release candidate, so you know bugs are expected, uh, and they're taking feedback from users to correct them. But one of the bugs that I've noticed is that uh, when you enable rapid trigger, so you can do through the software or through manual now. So you press uh, function two and T. You see now this turbo mode is on. It's supposed to lower latency. And I think somebody in Discord posted a picture where latency numbers were compared. I'll, I'll throw up a picture here. It's in Chinese though. If you can read Mandarin, I think it is. Uh, it discusses the latency numbers between this and uh, the wooden keyboard. And they're pretty much identical uh, when they're in turbo mode. So. Yeah, I mean, uh, I don't know who the person is that tested it. I can't really verify the results or speak to them. But, uh, you know, if you speak Mandarin and you can understand that, that's fine. But uh, as far as, like I said, end user experience goes, this and the Steel Series Apex Pro TKL, I can't tell the difference in the game. They behave exactly the same. If you see the Apex footage that I'm going to put up, uh, you know, Rapid Trigger works the same for both of them. I can super glide with both of them. Uh, and that's really what matters in this game. You can super glide easier. You can do tricks easier. Uh, and CS, Go, and Valorant, I don't play either of those games, but apparently the Rapid Trigger also helps in those. So if you're into that, um, you know, go for it and get this keyboard. This keyboard's a great price. It's $120 bare bones. Uh, and the keycaps, depending on how you want to, you can splurge either very little, up to $20 or up to $40 or even more. Maybe even $100 if you're into the GMMK keycaps. But, uh, yeah, so you can customize this however you want. The nice thing is it comes in black and white. Um, it's got really good build quality. It's a small company, but Drunk Deer, from what I've seen, they've been on top of things, which I really, really, really appreciate. Um, Steel Series, I mean, it's fine. Razor, they're fine, but they're big corporations. They're not going to listen to you. They're not going to listen to your feedback. They're going to do what they want. I don't really think they're really customizable either. Uh, Drunk Deer is coming out with an aluminum case this December. Um, I don't know if I can transplant this PCB into that. Um, I asked the Discord support guy and he says you might be able to, but he didn't really give a firm answer. Uh, but uh, the nice thing is they are coming up, coming out with an aluminum case. So they're improving as they go along, they're iterating. And they do take uh, suggestions. Um, they had a they have a suggestion uh, portion in Discord and I suggested that um, they add a, a keyboard rest, a manual one. I asked initially for a magnetic one, but they said that wouldn't be possible because of the Hall Effect keys, it'd interfere with them. So I suggested, well, why don't you guys just add a latch to one uh, the way Corsair does for their keyboards? And one of their engineers said, yeah, um, that's a good suggestion. And we're going to put that in for consideration. We might actually do that. So that's what I really enjoy from a small company like that. They listen to you. They take feedback and uh, they take it seriously. Uh, so, yeah, 
If I had to pick between these two keyboards, number one, the Drunk Deer is cheaper. I think it's built better, sounds better out of the box. It's got better support. Yeah, the key, the software, as you're going to see in the video, I'm going to go through it right now. Uh, it has its bugs. You know, it's it's developing. It's um, it's not quite where it needs to be yet. The Steel Series keyboard uh, software it has its own problems too. I you know, like the actuation preview didn't work, as I mentioned earlier, uh, as I was showing in the video. Um, so, you know, uh, also now with the newest web driver for the A75, you can set your custom. Um, uh, keyboard depress and lift off ranges for rapid trigger, which is really nice. Uh, you can't do that with the Steel Series. Uh, in fact, I'm going to get into that right now. Let's discuss the software for the next portion. Okay, so we have the Apex Pro TKL software here. Um, I've got the 61 keys highlighted, and as you can see, you can highlight all of those for rapid trigger. Um, now, if I if I take this and I highlight all of them, you can see it only does the specific ones that I mentioned. The F keys and the delete insert and the arrow keys are not included as part of Omnipoint. Uh, by selecting A here and turning on live preview, I'm pressing the key and nothing's happening. There's no live preview at all. Um, so I don't know what the deal is with the software. Maybe it's buggy, but uh, it never worked for me. But anyway, now I've got all the keys highlighted. And uh, if I go ahead and I reset them, I can then uh, select all the keys uh, which is what I'm about to do right here, and then uh, turn on Rapid Trigger. Now you can see Rapid Trigger is turned on for all of them. Um, also, if you go to uh, Dual Actuation, you can select A, and uh, you can assign two different actuation values. Now, um, the Dual Actuation, the way it works, it's based on what you set originally for the actuation point, and so the secondary one has to be lower than the primary one in order for it to work. So, for example, between Walk and Shift, uh, walk would be the lower actuation, and the secondary one would be a little different number, uh, you know, a little bit lower. As for lower meaning 2.0 versus 1.5 for walk. So, you know, 1.5 would be walk, and then run would be 2.0. <clears throat> uh, they also have uh, meta bindings. They have uh, those are basically you use the Steel Series key, and you can assign a function like playback or pause or whatever you want to do. And personally, I never used it. Um, you can set up macros. Uh, you can set up, uh, you know, media buttons, device functions, and uh, assign mouse buttons as well. So there's some, there's some, you know, additional features that the software has. Uh, Drunk Deer doesn't have any of this. Well, they do in their in their local software, but the web driver doesn't have it right now. Um, personally, I don't really find any of this useful. Um, it's just fluff. And uh, I mean, if you use it, that's fine. And if you do choose to use it with the Drunk Deer software, you can download the local software. Although it is a little bit less. It's more clunky than this is. I, I think the Steel Series one, as far as these kind of features go, is a little bit more robust. That's not really saying much. Um, here with the OLED settings, you can change the picture like I did. Um, that's about it. Really nothing special. I think that pretty much sums up the software for uh, the Apex Pro TKL. Uh, keep in mind now, unlike the Drunk Deer, you can't set your uh, rapid trigger two points like you know downstroke and upstroke. So that's something to keep in mind if it's important to you. So this is a Drunk Deer web driver RC2 is what it's currently on. Uh, I want to start with the new features that it has. So it has something called Turbo Mode that's similar to Wooting's Tachyon. So what it does is essentially is it turns off the RGB LEDs. Well, it's supposed to. Uh, it's currently buggy where it doesn't. But in, in, in theory, it's supposed to turn them off. And uh, by doing that, it saves, I'm assuming, on CPU cycles. And you're able to get lower latency uh, similar to the Tachyon mode for Wooting and uh, and somebody in China, now I can't verify whether these results are credible or not, but somebody in China did do a latency test. I don't have the hardware to do that myself. And they claim that the latency between this and the Wooting are the same when turbo mode is enabled. Uh, again, I can't verify that, uh, but you know, it is there. Uh, it seems like Drunk Deer is making progress. Uh, the fact that they got a working web driver in such a short time, it's uh, pretty surprising given how small their developer team is. Uh, they also have rapid trigger here. So if I enable that, you'll see you'll see two numbers here. So actually, you'll see a 2.0, that's the actuation point. I don't have the downstroke or the upstroke set up, so I want to talk about that. So downstroke is how far you press a key when it's when rapid trigger is enabled. So if you like it, let's say at a 0.6 millimeter downstroke, and you want to you barely want to lift up your keyboard, uh, your key. You can set it at 0.2, so now you've got two different actuations for rapid trigger. you got 0.6 for the downstroke, 0.2 millimeters for the upstroke. Uh, or you can set them to be exactly the same. 
And when you do that, you'll notice the numbers are reflected up here. Uh, they're saying 2.0, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, and that, that's applicable for every key on here. Uh, so for example, if I chose all of them and I want to put rapid trigger in all of them, let's say, you know, uh, that so you see every single key now has a, has a number associated with it. Uh, you can clear it here. There's also different profiles. Uh, they have an export, but strangely enough, there's no import feature. So I'm assuming they're going to add it on. Again, this is an RC2. It's in development. Yes, it's buggy, but uh, it's making progress. Um, you can also enable keystroke tracking. So for example, A and D. Uh, let's say I do it in A, you know, uh, it'll it'll light up. Uh, I got to turn off turbo mode to do that. So there you go. Uh, it's turned on. Uh, you can see that. But if I turn on turbo mode, it doesn't it doesn't track it anymore. Another feature this uh, web driver has is the ability to select uh, preset colors, and you can select the brightness and speed for those. You can also like if you want one color, you pick always light, and then you have the solid bar presets you can choose from. But uh, as far as uh, the web driver goes, that's it for now. Uh, you know, just to recap, the turbo mode does have issues. Uh, it doesn't turn off the RGB LEDs, so they are aware of that, and they're probably going to address it in a future RC3 release. I think that pretty much covers what I wanted to. Uh, now, with respect to the Steel Series versus the A75, personally, I think the A75 is a better keyboard. Uh, it feels better, types better. Uh, it's making more progress. It has a web driver. I think uh, the rapid trigger feature, especially with setting sensitivity of downstroke and upstroke, is something that um, Steel Series doesn't have. Even as far as I know, uh, Razer doesn't have it either. I know. I think Wooting does. Uh, another thing that Drunk Deer has said that they're working on is an analog uh, simulator, kind of like what the Wooting has. Uh, essentially, you know, you press you press down the key and it simulates a controller. So that'll be kind of nice for racing car uh, sims and all that sort of thing. So if that's what you want, that's what you're looking forward to. They're eventually going to have it. They're also going to, they used to have dual actuation, which is something the Steel Series does have right now. Uh, but Drunk Gear removed it for whatever reason. I don't know, maybe it was buggy. But uh, they said that is also coming back in a future time. So, so they are making improvements. They're iterating uh, fairly quickly and they're adding on new features. I was really surprised that they had the web driver ready so quickly. Uh, and I look forward to what Drunk Deer can do in the future. So anyway, if you found this uh, comparison useful, give me a thumbs up. If not, give me a thumbs down. I always welcome your feedback and I uh, hope you have a great day. Thank you.